So this is the paragraph that they gave us. They want us to um, take in the item price or item cost and then produce a sale price, which is 40% marked up. So not that difficult a problem, but th this is a good example of how you'll be doing it. So when we take a look at it, the first thing we see is that um, what is our output? So the standard markup is 40%. So what they want is the product cost and then return of the sale price. So sale prices are output. So I'll just simply copy that and paste that into my output. In this case, we only have that single output. So how are we going to figure out the sale price? Well, we have two ways of doing it. Uh, it could be input or it could be a calculation. 99% uh, of the time, it's going to be a calculation because if they just input the sale price and then output it, then it would be much point of the program. So then I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it and paste it into the calculations. So copying and pasting is important because we want to make sure that these all are identical. Now before I do the calculation, I can look in here and see if there's any um, constants, things that do not, do not change every time we run the program and the standard markup is 40% and that doesn't change every time we run the program. That'd be kind of ridiculous. So that is going to be our constant. So that's going to be in our assumptions and it's going to be the last assumption. So I'm going to say that um, I must just use this. I'm going to copy that, paste that to our assumptions. And I'm going to say that the standard markup is equal to, and it says 40%. So for the when you're doing a markup, uh, you just put a one in front of it in the decimal equivalent of that 40%. If it was a discount, then we subtract it from 100. But uh, so instead of 0 0.40, we'll do 1.40, and that makes our our uh, math pretty easy. So now let's go back down to the calculation. Now that all the standard markup is, so the sale price is going to be equal to got something up here called product costs. So let's go ahead and use that. I'll copy that. Paste that down here. And we're going to multiply that by our standard markup. So again, I'm going to copy and paste. I cannot stress how important it is to copy and paste just like I'm doing in this video. Because if you put a typographical error in any of these that I'm doing right now, you're going to end up with an error and it's going to take you hours to try to find it. So if you copy and paste, then there's no way it ever can happen. So now we take a look at this and say, well, where am I going to get product costs from? Um, I don't have that document anywhere. And we know that the product cost is something that they have to provide to us. So that means the product cost is an input. So I'm simply going to copy this and paste it into our input. And then where am I going to get the standard markup from? And we're going to get it from our assumption. So we're pretty much done. The only thing we want to do is add some scope. So what I'm going to add to this one is say that um, only one item at a time. Okay, so I'm going to tell my user that. I said one item at a time, right? And he goes, oh, no, we do three at a time. Well, then that changes my whole solution. I'd have to go back and redo it. So I want to make sure that if I believe it's one item at a time, that he that is actually valid assumption on my part. All right, now that I'm done with this, now I can go ahead and make it into a human algorithm. I copy only the constant down to the bottom. And to save time, I'm not going to open up another notepad. I'm simply going to move this down. Okay, and then this is going to be the human algorithm. I simply paste what I've already done into it. So I have my standard markup equals 140. And then my input is simply going to be one line. I'm going to say, well, my input is this. If I had more than one input, I would have another line that says input, whatever that other input is. Um, I don't bother putting calculations in there, so I'll go ahead and delete that out. And that's our math. And then the final thing is our output. And I put a colon there. All right, so now we have constant, input, calculation, and output. We're done. All right, so the only thing I have to do now is get this into a flowchart. So 
I'm going to open up my flow charting software. The first one has an equal sign, so that's an assign. Oh, I haven't done one more thing. The other thing I want to do is I want to get rid of all my spaces. So I'm going to get rid of that, but I'm also going to get rid of the M and retype it because I really want it to be uh, camel notation. That is, the second word has a capital, so we can see the words easy. Then I'm going to copy this. I'm going to get an I copy and paste and paste it over this standard markup to make sure that they're identical. Product cost, same thing. I'm going to get rid of the C in the space, retype the C, copy product cost, and paste it here. So now they're identical. The last thing is sales price, sale price. So I'm going to get rid of the P and the space, retype the P, and then again copy and paste. You can say, well, why didn't I just go ahead and fix the other sale price rather than copying and pasting. Now, if I made an error, then I have an error in my code. All right, so let's go ahead and flow chart it. The first one has an equal sign, so I simply use the assignment for that. I double click on it. You can see it already has an equal sign in it. So I copy the left side from here. I use control C and I paste it in using control V. Then I take the 140 I copy it, and I do Control V, and I paste it. Here's my first one. Okay, the second one is my input. So I simply use the input. All right, and that is product cost. So I copy that, and I paste it in. Now notice there's a more thing on here too. So what I need to do is click on more, and here is where I'm going to type in the question. In quotes, what is the product cost? Question mark. I have to start and end with a question mark. And I click OK. OK, the next one is sale price. And it's got an equal sign. So I simply use an assignment for that also. Again, this, the um, equal sign is already there. So I'm simply going to copy the left side. and paste it in. Come on. Come on. It's not uh, complying. There you go. Gosh, what's happened to my mouse? All right, so, and then we do the other side. I copy that and paste it into the right side and click OK. Okay, the last thing is my output, and that is sale price. So I'll go ahead and copy sale price. And then I will use the output. On this one, before I can paste in the sale price, I need a label so people know what this number is. So again, I'm going to use quotes. And I'm going to say the sale price is. And then I'm going to join that using the plus symbol with sale price that I've copied and pasted. And now I know there's no errors in my flowchart. Okay, but we did have test data. So up here it says, if I type in 100, 140 comes out. So what I'll do is I'll hit this play button up here, the run. All right, it will ask me what the production cost is, and I'll say it's 100. And then it'll output the sale price is 140. So I know now, come on. All right, well, it's not, not complying. Well, you can see it over there. It's 140. So I know that this works, and that's what I use my flowchart for, is to test my solution. So now I have to code it. All right, so I come in here, click on the Objects tab, and then JS. And then I have my human algorithm. So my human algorithm is what I code from. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. We don't need that much room. And kind of put them side by side. And this is a good idea to do. So I need blank places in memory. So I start with var. My blank place in memory is my input and the result of calculations. So my first one is product cost. So I'll copy that paste it in, comma space, and sales price. So anything to the left of an equal sign 
in a calculation, an input has to go up on this top line. And then I end with a semicolon. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a comment in and say that this is my assumptions. And actually, what I can do now is I can actually take the rest of my code, copy it. You can do it line by line, but it's probably easier doing it this way. So my assumption is this. So I need to declare st standard markup and put a buck uh, put 1.40 into it. So I simply start it with the EAR and end it with a semicolon. I'm done with that line. Now this input here can't be part of my code, but if I t two slashes, it turns it into a comment. And then when I press enter, product cost is uh, my place in memory. Now I need to create a prompt to ask for the question. So what I'll do is I'll type in prompt, open and close parentheses, semicolon. What goes in the prompt? Well, I can go back to my flow chart. I've already done that. But I've tested it so I know that this works. So I'm going to copy that. Go back to my code and paste it into the parentheses. Okay, I need this a little bit bigger. No. Here we go. Now the only thing I have to add to this is my default value. So I do comma for my second argument and I put quote quote so that I don't have undefined. This right here, this line of code is perfect already. I just have to add a semicolon at the end. And then I have my output. So my output's going to be a little bit different. So I need to have document write. And then open parenthesis and close parenthesis and then semicolon. So right now, this would actually output the 140, but I need my label. And again, I'll go back to my flowchart and get that. So I'll get, I already have sale price in it, so I just have to do the plus and the label. All right, so that's all I'm copying there. I'll hit cancel. I'll go back to my code, and I'll paste it at the very beginning. And to make it look even prettier, I'll go ahead and put a dollar sign just before this quote so that it has a dollar sign on it too. All right, let's see if this works. So I'll go ahead and hit the preview. What does the product cost? I say it's 100. Click OK. And it says the sale price is 140, so I know that this is absolutely working perfectly. Uh, let me go back to the editor again. Let me take out these double quotes so you can see what happens if I do this wrong. If I don't add a second argument and I run it by hitting the preview button down at the bottom, you can see it has undefined in it. Never want to see undefined in there because it freaks out your user. It doesn't break your thing. I can still type 100 over it, but you never want your user to see undefined. They won't understand.